Welcome, welcome, one and all. Winter Wizard here. And in this video, I'm going to introduce you to somebody. Thank you very much for joining me today, whoever you are, and welcome to this little video of mine where, where I'm going to introduce you to somebody. Yeah, so we're here in the frozen fortress. It's it's cold and lonely, uh, but Dimu and I are, en are enjoying a, a nice jug of Mjod, and very soon the sun is going to be going down, and we thought that we'd get this little video done. It's a very important video. Uh, I've got to introduce you to somebody who's, who's very dear to me, and is very important to me, and is very important... Uh, well, in some ways, it's very important to to Winter Wizard Seven. So uh, I'm not going to beat about the bush too much. We're going to we're going to dive straight into this. So who is this mystery person? This important person that I need to inform you of? Who I need to introduce you to? Well, well he's something of a character in in a certain sense. He's shrouded by mysteries and and rumors and whispers. There's really there's really not a whole lot that is really known for sure about him. Some say he has a bionicle arm, uh, the result of an unfortunate encounter with a Tyranid Lictor. Uh, unfortunate for the Lictor, I mean, for um, he, as he as he turned to face the creature and it tore off his arm. Well, he stuck a power sword through its face. Some say ninety-one is his number, and that he only ever fires a shot if he knows it's going to kill. Some say he could dispatch a blood letter with nothing but a cold, hard stare and that he has a wise oratory voice of command so smooth it could make a hormigaunt purr. But amongst all these myths and legends, all these whispers and rumours, all these fabrications of truths, all we really know is... he's called the Major. Yes, the Major, and and if you've if you've been a fan of the channel, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you may have heard this name before, and I am of course referring to my dear brother Joseph. Yes, you heard me correctly. I, Winter Wizard, do in fact have a brother, and not just a battle brother, but a brother of my own flesh and blood. So he is my brother, and he is very, very dear to me indeed. Uh, or, but possibly almost as dear to me as as even Dimu is. Um, but sincerely, he is amongst my favourite people in the world, and and he was responsible for getting me back into the hobby of Warhammer 40k. I have talked about this before, but yeah. So my brother, my brother and I, when we were kids, we we played Warhammer. We collected stuff. I had some Tyranids, and I had some Tomb Kings from Warhammer Fantasy, and I had an Isengard army from Lord of the Rings as well. And we played a lot of games on the floor in our bedrooms, we murdered the models with paints and uh, only the Omnissiah knows if we were ever playing the rules correctly. But uh, we had a wonderful time, but uh, like most things we sort of got a bit older and it sort of fizzled out and we moved on to other interests and stuff. But then in 2018 um, he called me up once and he said, oh I've been looking at Warhammer 40k again and, and, it's, and it all went from there and, and here we are. So back in the hobby uh, started off with the Death Guard in 2018, and now look at me. So, so I, I think it really is genuinely fair to say that if it wasn't for my brother, um, Winter Wizard Seven wouldn't exist. This channel wouldn't exist, and we wouldn't. I wouldn't be talking to you right now. So I wanted to do a video, I wanted to in introduce you to him for that reason, but also there's a couple of other excellent reasons why I'm going to do that, why I wanted to introduce you to him as well, and I'm going to touch on to those right now. So. So the first one is, um, so the Major has his own Instagram account, and he has, quite recently, he's been collecting a few armies, so he started off by collecting Astra Militarum, he's got about 3,000 odd, more than 3,000 odd points of them, and he's got Dark Angels, uh, which, um, which uh, obviously have a, have a lot of beef with the with the great company of Frost Paws, <laughs> and uh, he's got about three thousand points out of Dark Angels, the Sons of the Lion. But quite recently, he has just started a brand new army, and that army is Imperial Knights. And he has decided that at the point of starting this army, that he is going to turn his Instagram account into a official. Warhammer 40k hobbyist account. So let me show you this. 
So we've got Instagram up here, and this is this is his account. There he is. This is my battle brother, the Major. And there he is. He's got his nice piece. He's just got a nice logo done. His nice artwork. So there he is. Spitting image. And 91 scrawled into the skull on the hat. Lovely touch indeed. But, um, but here he is. So this is his Instagram. You see he's got his Astra Militarum. Uh, he's even got a Bane Blade there. Wonderful stuff. And let me show you. Here's a good picture. So he's got his Astra Militarum. This is his full Imperial collection. Uh, Astra Militarum, Cadians. And they are along with all his vehicle, the tanks company. Super heavy in there, and the flyer. And his Dark Angels here as well. For the Emperor. And and recently he started he started a Knight's Army. So let me find the post. Here it is, and I'll read this out to you. So says, after much thought and consideration, I've decided to start Imperial Army number three. Over the last three and a half years, I've put together 3,500 points of Cadians and around 3,000 points of Dark Angels. But now I think it's time to have a go at the mighty Imperial Knights. So there it is. Imperial Knights. And... So why am I so excited about this? Well, first of all, this is this is his Instagram. It's official now. He's official Warhammer 40k hobbyist. So do go and check him out. Drop him a drop him a, a follow. Uh, I'm gonna do some more talk a bit more about this at the end of the video. But um, but so what he's decided? He was talking to me about this. So he decided to start Imperial Knights. He, he had a few ideas in mind of which armies he would do. He settled for Imperial Knights, and he was telling me he said Winter Wizard. Um, when I start my new army, I'd quite like to. I'd like to make my account official. I'd like to be a, a hobbyist, uh, you know, a hobbyist in official on social media. Essentially, he is. He was already official hobbyist, but he wants to make his Instagram hobbyist official. So, um, so he's done that now, and he's going to be uploading regular images of his of his knights as he as he gets them painted. Uh, this is a work in progress here, and. Yeah, there is. I'm, I'm so so excited about his dice. I think it's an awesome color scheme. He's got a beautiful purple going on there. But um, what I'm most excited about with the Imperial Knights is is that is actually the law and the fluff that he's written behind them. And that's what I want to tell you a little bit about today. So I'm going to tell you about that, and I'm also going to follow that up with more reasons as to why this is all exciting and some more stuff that you can look forward to in the future to do with Winter Wizard and the Major. Here we are then. So what I asked him to do, I said, uh, write up your law, uh, you know, write up the backstory of Siren and, and send it over to me because uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a video uh, introducing you and introducing Siren and, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to read it out for you. So this is, this is what he sent. This is the Mage's words uh, and this is his backstory, his fluff of Siren. So put your feet up or go get yourself a cup of tea and, uh, and pay attention to this. Here we are then, so this, ladies and gentlemen, this is Siren. So, the moon of Siren is a predominantly aquatic world. Its vast oceans and marshlands flourish with marine life, whilst there is almost no natural terrestrial fauna or flora. The moon itself is made up of approximately 85% ocean, 14% Martian swamplands, and 1% dry land, of which is entirely mountainous. Siren orbits a gas giant planet called Trident, which has a very large ring around it composed of asteroids, space dust, and debris. The moon's orbit actually passes through the ring twice a year, subjecting the moon to ferocious asteroid bombardments and storms, hence why there is little if no terrestrial life. The atmosphere of Siren is of a similar composition to Terra, and therefore means it is able to support human life. Trident and Siren orbit the star of Stellamaris, which is ancient Terran, meaning Star of the Sea. The Stellamaris system resides in the region of space known as the Ghoul Stars. The Siren was the first place colonised by man in its system, due to being very close to a warp gate, 
which is the easiest route in and out of the solar system. When humans started to expand into the galaxy, the moon was colonized by settlers who used the mountains to their advantage by tunneling deep into them to make strongholds and fortresses, thus protecting them from the twice yearly asteroid bombardments. At some point in history, Siren was cut off from humanity. Despite this, they were able to survive. The phenomenal defensive quality of the moon's natural geography, along with the oceans flourishing with marine life, meant the small populace of Siren were able to survive. The populace does, however, remain very small by 40k standards, only a few million inhabitants across the entire moon. The rule of Siren falls to House Siren, a night household with complete authority over all citizens. Over the years, Siren has become quite a well-established human world, thriving on their own and developing huge war machines to patrol the mountainous, uh, to, to patrol the mountains and swamps. These war machines, more commonly known as Imperial Knights, are well suited to, vers to traversing not only the difficult mountainous terrain, but also the vast swampy marshlands of the moon as well. They are the masters of their home ground and have been modified to cope with such treacherous conditions. And then, by chance, an Adeptus Astartes fleet of the Black Templars chapter rediscovered the moon, attempting to reclaim it for the Imperium after entering the Stellamaris system via the Warp Gate. They came down to the surface of the moon, only to be attacked by massive anti-air batteries and huge war, and war machines, which were mainly used for protecting the moon from the asteroid storms and rings of Trident. The Space Marines saw great value in Siren. Its position in the solar system, as well as its superior defensive geography, made it an asset they could not lose. However, even with several companies, they were still unable to take the moon. The Templars were, in fact, so impressed by the peoples of Siren's military prowess, their knowledge of the terrain, and their ability to thrive on this moon, that they decided these humans would be worth something to the Imperium. The Black Templars proposed a truce to House Siren. They would grant them the Emperor's protection, reinforcements whenever they needed them, tech priests to help and maintain and improve their knights, but also they would give them complete and total authority over the entire solar system. Siren would be the guardians of the quiet system of Stellamaris, as well as being charged with the duty of being the wardens of the Warp Gate. How Siren now proudly serves the Imperium, protecting their system and the Gate from any that may threaten them. The Black Templars have become firm allies to House Siren, helping them to fortify the moon considerably, but also using them as a, as a recruiting world. For the men of Siren, it is seen as a great honour to join the Black Templars. It is also for this reason that many noble men actually sometimes have fatal competitions with each other to find who is worthy for the Space Marine selection. Over many generations, this has reduced the numbers of men in the Noble House, and therefore pilot piloting the Knights is now almost exclusively done by women. They have earned themselves quite a reputation across the Imperium for defending their moon and solar system ferociously, and many unsuspecting victims have become prey on the waters and swamps to the knights piloted by the ladies of House Siren. So there we go then. So that's House Siren. That's uh, and the Moon of Siren, the knightly house of of Siren, and and that's the mages. That's the mages fluff and. That's the army that he has just died. I hope you enjoyed the Major's Fluff there. And personally, I I absolutely love it. I really, really do. I, I absolutely, I, I'm, in, I'm in love with the idea of this moon, moon of Siren, this beautiful aquatic world where it's predominantly water and swamps, but these great, these great mountains that are like really a, a an amazing natural, natural geographical uh, defensive structure for the planet. Like this planet is really, really, you know, it's, um, it's it's a it's an amazing sort of fortress in itself to be defended, but um, the whole siren playing in with this sort of you know the old sirens of, of legend, the mermaids and the song with the women pilots, um, it's um, it's really beautiful. And the idea of uh, of this moon that can go that orbits around a planet and gets bombarded by this uh, by the planet's ring twice yearly, 
uh, it's just it's really really cool I absolutely love it um, but there are more reasons as to why um, as to why I'm so excited and why I'm so in love with the idea of, of House Siren um, and that's because they are going to be involved with with my own fluff yeah so let me explain before before I get too much into this um, you all know uh, I've talked about it a few times I've uh, I've mentioned it and I've still got a lot of things to, to sort of prepare for for being able to do this or for this to be a possibility but you know that I want to do battle reports um, and the main reason for that is I want to tell stories um, the battle reports that I want to make are predominantly narrative story driven stuff and and well uh, one and I've mentioned it before but one of the most exciting one one of the things that I'm most excited about um, is to do with is to do with these two Forge Phobos and Kepri Dynasty so if you cast your mind back to when I revealed Kepri Dynasty when I revealed the four faction the Necrons on the channel and I, I did a little bit of a narrative audiobook um, you know audio drama type thing in, in that video and it was all about Forge Phobos uh, waking up the Necrons so Without getting, without uh, you know, I don't want this video to be cr crazy long, but without getting too much into this, um, basically, uh, and also if you cast your mind back to the um, to the to the Forge Phobos uh, law story, the price of acquisition and the interrogation of Inquisitor Alistair, basically, long story short, the Admech have got a little bit of a fancy for a piece of technology which they which they have discovered is belongs to a Necron tomb world uh, called Kepri uh, the tomb world is still asleep and the Forge Phobos the sneaky the sneaky boys that they are have set up a little bit of an operation to find Kepri get inside the tomb vaults nick this device and whatever else they can find and murder the Necrons while they're asleep uh, and, and then hightail it out of there um, however it doesn't quite go according to plan and the Necrons wake up and that's all we know and that's all I've written from the story and I want to do a series I want to do uh, the slaughter of Kepri a battle report series where I, where I where this, the games write the, write the story and we find out what happens uh, the, what, we find out what happens on the slaughter of Kepri we find out what happens when the, when the admin go inside we find out uh, you know it's called a slaughter but how much of a slaughter is it is it slaughter for the admix slaughter for the necrons uh, do they get the device thereafter do they find anything else who dies who survives do they escape what other secrets are lurking within the sands of kepri itself so but I, i'm sorry i'm getting off topic why am i talking about this well this is well i'm talking about this because kepri is in stellamaris or should I say the Stellamaris solar system? Uh, Stellamaris it was the star, uh, the star of the sea, uh, named by uh, the Imperium. But it's not the star. It, the star is not called Stellamaris to to Kepri. Um, I suppose there's no harm in telling you telling you what it's called. Uh, the star in the Kepri, uh, the, the star to the Necrons is called Venusa, and and Venusa, Venusa is the morning star and and so what happens is Stellamaris is a nice quiet solar system quiet plane it's guarded and by these uh, by the Imperial Knights of House Siren who are based on on the moon of Siren near the warp gate which is the quickest way in, a, in and out of the solar system so the Admech have snuck into this solar system via this warp gate uh, somehow anyway and they've gotten onto Kepri they've woken up these Necrons and now they're trying to now they're trying to get out of there and and uh, Siren are there like what the hell is going on like uh, these pesky cog-headed um, sneaky sneaky Admech boys have come along and they've woken up a they've woken up a, a um, they've woken up a blasted tomb world so um naturally Siren as the wardens of the gate and as the guardians of the Stellamaris system they are going to be well they're going to be some of the main the main combatants of against Kepri dynasty and also Forge Phobos they've 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 certainly got a bone to pick with them and this is why I'm this is why I'm really excited because because we want to do battle reports and the major and I are basically weaving a narrative together so my armies the major's armies we're writing a story together we're weaving a narrative together 
um, the you know war zone Stellamaris what's going on we've got the slaughter of Kepri in itself and then we've got all the stuff to think about with with Siren and how the beef that they've got with Forge Phobos and then the, the fact that they've now also got a, a tomb world waking up to deal with you know and they can't they can, obviously they can't let Kepri get through the warp gate or they've got they've got to sort this mess out and and there we go. I, I appreciate I'm rambling a lot. <laughs> Didn't really have much of a script for this video, but that is why I'm so excited. Um, the mage has got he's starting a new army. He's just became he's just made himself Instagram official, uh, official Warhammer hobbyist. He's going to be doing regular updates uh, for House Siren, his Imperial Knight army. He's my battle brother. We're writing this story together, and our narratives are intertwining. There we are then. So the sun is going down here at the Frozen Fortress. I'm uh, I'm going to stop rambling now. I'm going to start wrapping this video up. But but there we go. So the day where we can finally get to start making battle reports. Uh, the major himself does live quite does live very far away from the Frozen Fortress. But uh, we we will see him in battle reports. It is my it is my my sole mission to get him down here, uh, get him down to Bristol Independent Gaming to film some film some games and to tell these stories. So. I'm so looking forward to the day where, where I can make these where I can make these games for you and where I can tell you these stories and who knows maybe we'll even actually see a, a lore story video for House Siren um, it's just I'm absolutely in love with the with the idea of them I'm in love with this with the law that he's written so uh, there's no reason why we can't do that but uh, but there we go so to wrap this video up, I just want to very quickly say um, to to my brother, to the major, uh, I'm so happy to that you got me back into this into this crazy crazy hobby, um, and to all of you watching today, I've just it would really really mean the world to me if you just if you give the major the the warmest possible hobby welcome that you can. Um, this is a beautiful beautiful community full of amazing wonderful people. Um, so what I'm going to say is, uh, the major is making himself known. He is um, he, he's popping up in the comment section or, or on my videos. You may see him on Striking Scorpion 82 or maybe even Winters as well. He's he's a fan of those channels. So if you see the major in the comment section, uh, what I really want you to do is please for me uh, give him a warm welcome by saying hello. But if you could drop him a comment saying, major. We salute you. That'll be wonderful. That'll be that'll be superb. That'll be superb. We salute the major. Oh, and of course, don't forget, uh, head over to his Instagram page, give him a follow, uh, drop a little comment, say hi, offer him your salute there. But um, follow him on his Instagram page so we can see what he's up to and you can see all the updates for Siren, how they're getting along and any other projects that he's got on in the future as well. So so there we go. So we're going to wrap this video up from there. So um, don't forget, drop him a follow on Instagram and if you see him in the comment section, offer him your salute. And of course, if you've enjoyed the video today, if you if you enjoy my work, then then a, a like and a comment would be very, very much appreciated. And if you'd like to see more of what goes on here inside the Frozen Fortress, then perhaps you'll also consider becoming a subscriber. And once again, whoever you are, thank you very, very much for joining me today. I'm Winter Wizard. That's Dimu. And for now, keep it frosty.